Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. All right, quick costume change. My hair is down now underneath the hat <laughs> for anybody watching. This, this episode is being brought to you by Marcus with Down Hair. <laughs> <laughs> so the banter topic today is a, um, Ninja Creamy related. Okay. I want to hear from you. What is your go-to Ninja Creamy recipe that you have been using as of late? As of late, I am in a strawberry field of <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> oh, tell us, please. Um, I'm doing the Fairlife skim milk Yeah. with fresh strawberries mm -hmm. and some strawberry protein powder Yeah. and a little bit of, little bit of gelatin to thicken it up. Awesome. Yeah. Is it flavored gelatin or is it just gelatin packet? Um, I've been experimenting. I think the gelatin packet is maybe not quite sweet enough you know mm -hmm. so um i want to get some maybe try to find some like vanilla pudding i think is gonna be my next move on that sweet yeah simply delish i have been messing around with that yeah you like that yeah yeah i mean people i i my, my my main recipe that i've been using for a while uses some of that sugar-free jello pudding mm -hmm. uh mix yeah which uh you know has ingredients that i think a lot a fair number of people are not super excited to to deal with maybe some you know sucralose or uh some you know modified corn starches or things like that um i'm comfortable with it you know it's such a tiny amount it's a small amount but simply delish is a brand has a, a, a instant pudding a zero calorie or a low calorie instant pudding um that's stevia got some you know cleaner ingredients in it yeah. for anybody looking and i think they have a strawberry uh flavor Ooh. um but they definitely have a vanilla so you okay, could try yeah. that with it okay uh cool cool yeah. what are your do you have do you happen to know the macros on your on your uh creamy recipe it depends on what milk i end up using but it's usually i think it's usually like 50 or 60 grams for of protein for oh, like yeah. one thing which like i can't even eat a whole one in one sitting i usually split that to two yeah, yeah. solid yeah and i didn't I, I know i've seen it before but that fair life milk has a strawberry flavored milk which might set it way over the top is yeah, that what you, I, have, you, you i haven't been picking that up because i haven't found it but i've yeah, just been yeah. using the regular milk i really like milk like it's just the taste of milk is sweet yeah delicious. sweet enough yeah for sure yeah Yep. I have been uh, on a pumpkin kick. Uh, oh. So I've, I've been doing my pumpkin recipe. PSL. Yeah, PSL it's, season. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a pumpkin spice latte ice cream. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, and I, I use, I've been using almond milk um, or a combination of almond milk and Fairlife skim milk. The Fairlife and the almond get you similar consistency, um, but the Fair Life milk has a lot more protein in it. Yes. And then um, I use vanilla oatmeal cookie protein powder. Mm -hmm. I put a about 100 to 150 grams of pureed pumpkin in. And then I have a pumpkin spice uh, like blend, McCormick, you know, pumpkin spice blend. Yeah. Which I drop in there. And then I always put a scoop of, uh, of monk fruit sweetener in to just yeah, crank up I the do sweetness. A too. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then a, a vanilla or when I have it, when I have the access to the cheesecake flavored oh. gelatin Whoa. pudding mix, that pumpkin cheesecake is really what sets it sets it off. So yeah, that's the mix. Well, since we were talking about chai in the kitchen earlier, yeah. I thought I should try a chai ninja creamy recipe. That could be really good. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I did um, because uh, Element just dropped this the chocolate chai. chocolate chai, you know. Packet. chocolate chai salt which might be a nice little could be an interesting ingredient mm -hmm. just don't want to go over with the salt because you don't want salt you don't want we super don't want salty super salty ice cream, ice cream. you no. want a little salt a little salt is good. i put two grams of salt in as well yeah. anyway all that's to say there should be a link in the show notes here i have just we we have a blog post on our website that has the three top you know basically how to build a ninja creamy recipe oh, yeah. and then our three best recipes um just a killer way if you have a Ninja Creamy, if you got one for Black Friday, which you probably should have. Please, uh, yes. <laughs> hopefully there's a Cyber Monday sale or something still going on. You can get one. Maybe get one for the holiday coming up. But just an awesome way to get macro-friendly ice cream. End out 
your day with an additional 20 to 40 grams of protein, just really, really delicious and satisfying. And in addition to the blog post, uh, we set up a, I set up an Amazon storefront, Marcus Philly Amazon storefront, and there is a, a link to the my Ninja Creamy page where it's all the all the different things that you mm. need to basically start your Ninja Creamy journey mm. um, from the machine to the ingredients to anything that would go with uh, our blog post. So if you want to go check it out, I think they do a little bit of commission to us for, for shopping through that link. But anyway, that's just for you guys it's to more go for and you know than for us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Unless of course a million people want to go and buy from our link. In and which case we won't complain. We will not, I will not complain. I, that would be influencing for, for real. I mean, you do influence. <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah. okay. That was the banter topic of today. Yeah. And now it's time to, to launch into you know, the real content, people. The real content. Okay. Should I introduce our topic? Please, please. That's my cue. So this inspiration came from me overhearing one of Shauna's uh, consult calls with one of her clients. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a coach here at Functional Bodybuilding. And her client was going to do 75 hard. And yeah. Shauna was asking her a lot of thoughtful questions about what was the plan after 75 hard and what her client wanted to take away from that and I thought that with the end of the year it's a nice time to address these sorts of challenges or if you're tempted to do a cleanse or a 30-day shred or a focused new year's resolution kind of thing and you're kind of thinking ahead to that time of year and putting your plans in place for maybe getting a kickstart to your fitness or your health in some way that it's nice to have some things to keep in mind and mm -hmm. some of the ways that we approach making these decisions and how they fit into your long-term plan as well. Yeah. That's a great topic. I mean, it's very timely with the new year right around the corner. Uh, funny that you say that about one of Shauna's clients, like inquiring or thinking about doing 75 hard. Uh, cause Andrew was in this morning and Andrew said, Oh yeah, I just had this consult with one of my clients and he came the day he like, he started with me like, I don't know. I don't know how many days he was into 75 hard, but he was basically like doing that and hit a wall and then hired Andrew as a coach. Mm -hmm. And he's like, check it out. And he like showed me like day two progress photo with his client. Yeah. And it was like, you know, had just been doing 75 hard for a while. <laughs> and then it was like day 80, you know, working with Andrew. So more than 75 days after starting and it was just like this dramatic you know shift it was like what how did andrew say it he was like i mean look at him he's like he looks like maybe in this picture he was like you know kind of inflamed and now he looks like freaking rich froning at the games like you know it's like <laughs> it, it was it was dramatic and cer certainly something to be proud of um but just I, i'm not that that has any relevance to like how we're gonna talk about this but it was, uh, you know, kind of interesting that like on the same day, yes. so you overhear a conversation with Shauna, Andrew's pulling me aside to be like, hey, this is I'm like, mm -hmm. oh man, a lot of people out here doing 70, out here. 75 hard is having its day right now, because yeah. especially with the new year coming up. And we should quickly review what that is for people who aren't familiar. Please. So. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I know that maybe Nate can even shout out some of the, I think I've gotten the, you, you got the, the main the key the points. Yeah. I think it's, you follow a nutrition diet. I think you can choose a diet or a nutrition approach, but you choose some rules for yourself. You commit to yourself like a certain, no, a certain rules that, yeah. And you have no days off from that. No cheat meals, no alcohol. Mm-hmm. And you read 10 pages of, I think, a motivational type book every day. Mm -hmm. Two workouts a day for 45 minutes each. Mm. One of them must be outside. Wow. Yeah. And I think you're supposed to drink water. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. Did I Isn't miss anything? Daily and take a daily progress photo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There's nothing about journaling or writing? No. Reading ten minutes. Reading. But yeah, it can't be not fiction. Yeah, can't be fiction. Can't be, can't be a romance novel. <laughs> I see. That might be the hardest part for the whole thing for me. For you. 
reading. Yeah. That would be the easiest part for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get to page seven and I usually fall asleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did 75 hard light. Um, is it? Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm just, uh, what I'm hearing there is I'm like, okay, well, before we dive into the psychology of this thing and maybe answering some of the questions that Shauna was, you know, probing or, or asking some of the questions Shauna was probing her client with, it's to me, I'm like, well, what about this actually makes a lot of sense? Yeah. You know, cause like right out of the gates, if you go 75 days without doing alcohol and you've been drinking, that's a I'll part of your right life. <laughs> that's a, that alone could have a, a profound impact on, yes. on, on your health. So, you know, I, I, it sounds like they're really, you know, zeroing in on like, this is not, you know, these are, these are the biggest lever, levers to pull in your health. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, at least that one for sure. Um, I love the idea of like, you pick your own nutrition, you pick your, your, your nutrition adventure. Yes. Like, what are you going to do? I imagine people are like, I'm going to go full paleo for 75 days. I'm going to go keto. I'm going to go, you know, zero sugar. I'm going to do, you know, I don't know, vegan. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you are in the position to say, this is what I'm going to commit to versus like, hey, you need to do this diet, start this diet where somebody else is creating the rules. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. Like you then you can take a lot more ownership over what you're doing. Um, and. Once you start to set goals for yourself, like you start to really think, oh, look, I don't want to fail. So is that my overshooting? I think like, a lot of people do overshoot. They do overshoot in, in 75 hard, do you think? Yes. In yeah. general, people overshoot. Yeah. I was going to say in general, people overshoot. Um, but probably I think that ends up happening too because they don't start from a place of like, hey, join this challenge. You got to do this. It's that that's what most people do. Like, Oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to jump on the thing and I'm going to do what it says to do versus like, what do you want to commit to? Yeah. What can you, you know, what, what are you for sure going to ready to do? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's been Nate's journey this year, which I've been so proud of seeing happen and proud of him. It's that at no point did he like, He's like, well, tell me what to do. He's like, no, this is what I'm going to commit to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's been almost 12 months. You know, we're, we're, we're deep into the year where every step of the way, he's been the one to say, okay, this is all I'm focused on right now. And it hasn't been easy, but every time he's succeeded, he said, okay, now I'm ready to, I've made that a habit, a routine. I'm going to do the next thing. And that's the way to go. This is the way to go. I mean, it, it increases probability of success dramatically. Yeah. So, you know, kudos to 75 hard for seeing like, okay, nutrition's an area that's like, and it, it kind of sounds like in, in, in a number of these areas, it's like you kind of pick your own adventure, but these are, this is the framework to think about it. Yes. Um, even with exercise, like you got to do two workouts a day for 45 minutes each. One has to be outside. It's like, oh, well, that could be anything. Right. They're not telling you, you got to go and, you know, you could just walk, you could walk for 45 minutes and that, that, that counts. Um, you gotta, you, you, you have to do this. It's like, no, right. you, you want to do kettlebells. Great. If you want to do, you know, yoga, I suppose that probably fits in. It's like, yeah. you can kind of figure it out yeah. and that way it puts more of the, uh, yeah, choice in the hands of the person that's, that's trying to make change. Yeah. What do you think about the amount of time that something should take per day? That that does feel like it's a, um, time is is probably I don't know the hardest resource for people to juggle yeah. and to manage. And um, <laughs> I'm thinking back to our last talk about Tony Robbins. Time was something that came up so much. We talked about so so much in terms of limiting beliefs and, you know, uh, fears that people have and, um, you know, needs and so forth. But yeah, when saying like you, you need something, you need to take this much time or dedicate this much time to something. Uh, I think that can, that can really limit people's ability to follow through. Yeah. And I've, 
I know that with like, um, you know, in my twenties working out for three hours a day was like, this is what I do in my thirties working out for two hours a day started to feel like, Oh, this is a stretch. Maybe 90 minutes is good. You know, I'm getting closer to 40 now and it's like 60 minutes. It's like, that's what I, that's about all I want to be able to dedicate, you know, like, and maybe not six days a week, but four days a week, you know? Right. And, um, so I guess thinking about that, it's like, we've had to, I've had to really think more critically about like what you put on the page, what you ask someone to do and commit to, you know, that almost is like the first thing that will shut somebody down. Yeah. It's like, oh man, I just did that workout. It took me 90 minutes. I only got 60. I'm out of here. Not like, oh, that took me 90 minutes. How could I make that fit inside of 60 minutes? It's just like, no, it's just a deal breaker. Um, and of course, like you don't want to pretend like, you know, 15 minutes of total movement a day is going to suffice for, you know, health and, and moving the needle. Yeah. Um, and if, and if really it's like, if, if you're asking somebody, Hey, I want you to move for 90 minutes a day. That is absolutely within what every human being should devote to movement every single day. But a lot of people are doing that without even, you know, realizing that they do it. And, uh, and they're not necessarily doing it in 45 minute increments. Mm -hmm. So it's like, get out for a 15 minute walk, you know, do a, f uh, a 45 minute workout, get out for another 15 minute walk, you know, and then like do some gardening for 15 minutes at the end of the day. Right. Like it just adds up to 90 minutes. Like you're moving. You're not just, I think what we want is like 90 minutes of moving versus, you know, the other 16 hours of the day that you're in a chair. Yeah. It's like, well, shit, that's, yeah, that's, that's, you're barely like, in the right ratio of like inactivity to activity. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, setting, setting like clearly defined, like you got to go do it for this long. And this is, um, that, that taps into people's like discipline, you know, centers. And that's what makes it hard. That's what we're like. I, the, the goal is we want to, we want you to do something that is doable, but we, we need you to feel like you can do hard things Yeah. at the end of this. Yeah. I think that's how I'm starting to shape this in my mind is what is the before? What is the challenge or the short period of focus that you want to take on? And then what is the after? And what's the path between all of those things? Because if you're going from zero activity, pretty much you're completely sedentary and then you jump into 75 hard, that can be work out well if you <laughs> really can commit the time and, and make that happen. Um, but then it's like, are you committing to an ongoing lifestyle of moving for an hour and a half a day in these different ways? Or is just this like a stepping stone? Because after you do something like 75 hard, your pre 75 hard zero minutes of movement, you know, can transform into a daily, maybe 45 minutes. That's more reasonable and feel much more doable because you've been doing double that during the challenge. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think it does make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, and I guess the other th question I have is, you know, I guess coming back to my, that last, the last thing I, I had just said too was like, how much are people just chasing this like, I, maybe, okay, the marketer in you. Like the name, 75 hard, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of ways I think they could have gone with that. Sure. What about hard is, you know, how is that being spun into like, oh, I want to do that. You know, um, when, when, when we're wired for comfort, we're wired for, you know, sort of like the easier path, path of least resistance. Yes. You know, it's like, uh, is there an inner David Goggins in all of us that wants to just like 
get out there and feel some suck Mm -hmm. or need, do we need to feel that, you know? I think it's less about that and it's more about the limiting belief aspect because if you prove to yourself that you can do something hard, then that changes your whole framework. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Megan, not to out her on this one, but one of her limiting beliefs that we surfaced at Tony Robbins was like, I can't do hard things. You know, she feels that sometimes or she believes that. And I think maybe that was why, you know, our CrossFit days together were so profound for her. Mm -hmm. She did something really hard every day. Yeah. She does hard things today still too. I've, I've seen her do really hard things. Yeah. But you know, maybe that, 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 that is a a belief for a lot of people. And I think it actually can be a belief for anybody if they go through a period of, you know, a season of life that's maybe a little easy or a little, we, we talked about that wheel too of like, you know, uh, good times breed weak people, mm-hmm. weak people, you know, uh, lead to hard times, hard times lead to, to strong people, strong people lead to good times. It was kind of, it's kind of this wheel. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, when things are too easy for too long, you start to get a little soft yes. in who you are, your constitution, your, you know, your, <clears throat> and then as a result, things get hard. And then it's like, okay, I got to go through something hard. And the season is hard. And then what comes out of this a hard season? Strength, you know, which then when applied to other areas is going to, you know, reap some good times. Yeah. It was, it was also like the, the analogy also was related to the seasons of life. You know, spring is, it's the good times. It's when everything grows with great ease, you know, there's, you don't even barely need to f- pay attention to watering your plants. They're still growing out there, you know? And then, uh, obviously winter has its, you know, feelings of like, Oh, it's winter. Winter's here. Like yeah. this is the hard, this is the hard times. Uh, you know, this is when we build strong people. And we talked about like, we're kind of in a, and, and that we're, the life goes through, uh, you know, life goes through these seasons, countries, economies go through these seasons. And like, you can just trace it back through human history. It's like, we're coming into a winter season of life in the economy, in our, it's technically winter, but it's like the winter of, you know, the U S economy economy with like a recession, you know, looming and, and happening. It's like, um, anyway, yeah, we have to go through hard, hard stuff. We do. mm -hmm. Well, and I think one other thought to introduce to, uh, taking on a challenge or taking on something hard is that it's both an opportunity to strengthen yourself And I think that it's also important to think about what you will think of yourself if you fail. Mm. And what does that mean? Because taking it back to Andrew's client, um, I would say he didn't fail. He just redirected in a new way and then ultimately found something much more sustainable for him. But one's mental outlook on these things has a great impact on not only the outcome of their short-term challenge, but what their beyond will look like. Yeah. Um, wow. That's yeah. W- thinking about like <laughs> going into, um, I know that fear of failure is something that a lot of people, you know, really struggle with and that can be the obstacle to like starting hard things. Like I don't want to fail that. So I'm not going to even get, get in there. Um, but I, I was, you know, listening to Stephen Bartlett recently, Mm -hmm. you know, he talks about one of his gifts, like one of his true gifts, what makes him unique is that he's, he's, he's a great, he's, he's, uh, he loves, he's good at failing and quitting. He just like, like one, he, he wants to fail fast so he can learn. And when he's doing something hard and it's like clearly it gets to a choice, like a point where it's like, this isn't serving me anymore. 
he doesn't feel like this attachment to like, I got to finish the thing. He's like, no, I'm, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Yeah. You know, Andrew's client, I'm oh, in the 75 hard things not working. It's pointing me in this other direction. I'm going with it. And guess what? I just channeled all that energy into the next thing that is successful. And so therefore it wasn't a failure. It was a success. Me quitting is not failing. It's just knowing when it's, when it's time to fold them and move on to the next. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, what else does, were there any other questions that you heard Sean, uh, probe her client with that could, we could talk about now? I think that the last point that I eavesdropped on Shauna from (laughs) was that um, there's something important about the transition. So if you do something like 75 hard and then on the last day you stop and then you're back to normal life, um, I think that Shauna brought up a great point, which is to take some time to journal a few thoughts on what you learned and what you want to take with you and what you're ready to let go and maybe why those things are and um, not just have that like, yay, I'm done. I'm going to run out to Cheesecake Factory (laughs) (laughs) on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really, that's a lot of wisdom coming from somebody who's clearly put herself through some, you know, hard things and challenges and probably done that. Yeah. And I'm thinking about, um, you know, back in the 2013, 14 timeframe, um, I would periodically do these, uh, like kind of juice cleanses or like near a cleanse. Mm -hmm. It was like the master cleanse. Sure. If anybody's familiar with that, it's like basically drinking lemonade with like, Hot cayenne, pepper. Yeah. cayenne pepper, maple, lemon maple syrup. Yeah. For like five days in a row. And that's, that's it. Like no food. And, um, I remember doing those and just being like, okay, like apparently this is good for me. Like I just didn't fully appreciate like what was the purpose of it. I kind of thought, saw it as like, okay, people in my, my like fitness circles and coaches are, are doing this and I got to do it and it's going to be hard. And like, you know, very short sighted, like, okay, the end goal is here and I'm going to, okay, cool. I got there and let's go have pizza, you know, like let's go and celebrate that we got through this thing. And I remember at least on the first round of doing it, I was like a day later, I was like, what was the point of that? Like I just cleansed and then I just like ate like crap for like two days straight. And Mm -hmm. now I'm just like, I feel awful and (laughs) like nothing feels, I don't feel cleansed whatsoever in my life. (laughs) All right. Um, yeah. So like thinking through, like, you know, you take on a challenge, the challenge doesn't stop on day 75. It stops on, you know, well, it's really like you have to buffer some time to consolidate and integrate those lessons and give yourself enough space. And I, I I think it's often, it's just as simple as that. It's like, okay, we're going to do this thing. Like it's not just a 30 day thing. It's all right for 40 days you're in this 30 we're following the the structure and then for 10 we're mm-hmm. going to transition out of it you know and you're going to learn what lessons you're going to take from it yeah right yeah what's that with you what are you laughing about oh i was just smiling because i was just remembering that i mean i used to do some really intense spiritual retreats mm-hmm. and i remember coming off a 10-day retreat one time where i'd been fasting and i'd been on silence and i'd been out in nature And then it was over and then I went to the airport to fly home and I was just looking around at the people and I was just like, what, what is happening? Oh my God. It's, it's, um, you know, it's tough sometimes to, uh, change states like that without, but you can't exactly have a beautiful transition from (laughs) one to the other all the time. Oh shit. I I have a very similar story to that, which is, (laughs) it was 2000 and, uh, I guess, maybe 2007 no something like that and i had just spent a month at living at the ashram mm-hmm. in colorado and you know we woke up at four, 5 a.m every morning meditated for hours meditating in the afternoon ate in silence wore white head to toe yeah. you know did daily service you know just like it was full on as full on as i'd ever de- 
delved into spirituality and, and a practice like that. And I uh, got on the plane in Denver, flew to San Diego, uh, and interviewed for medical school the next day. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, I was like so chill and blissed out and just like one with everything. And I think I brought a little bit too much of that vibe uh-huh. to my interview. And the guys are probably like, this fucking hippie. Like, what the? Like, we, I needed to be a little, I needed to like tap into my like college Robbins. like Top Gun like, I'm going to fucking eat you alive, man. <laughs> Give me that degree. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't get into UCSD. Oh, bummer, dude. <laughs> they... they didn't even waitlist me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, cool discussion. I hope I hope there were some nuggets that people took from this, and uh, I hope that you lean into, you know, this time of year where maybe you're thinking about how you want to reinvigorate some aspect of your life in the new year, how you might want to approach taking on hard things, mm-hmm. what it might look like to do that. And know that your success, your, you know, success versus failure is not dictated by whether you complete it, hit every 45 minute workout, read all 10 pages, whatever the thing is, it's what you learn from it and how it applies to the rest of your life. And it might just be like, stick it out and do the hard thing for as many days as you can and prove to yourself that you can do this thing that's hard. Um... And then integrate those lessons afterwards. Give yourself some space. Don't fly from Denver to San Diego <laughs> an right into an interview. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. All right. Good talk today. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Take care. Yeah.